Good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk to Dr. Mike Beljun, a senior lecturer, a researcher, and OCHOD in public administration and management. Welcome, Doctor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sipoko. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Doctor. Can you share with us, Doctor, how did you become a researcher? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, I think I want to focus on um, my journey and what sparked my interest in research. So about uh, 10 years ago, when I joined academia as a, as a lecturer at the University of the Free State, I was invited to work on a project that was commissioned by the department, the National Department of Science and Technology. And uh, this particular project looked at innovation in um, the Free State province. And I got the opportunity to work on that project and that actually sparked my interest not only in innovation, but also in social innovation. And that uh, laid the foundation for the research trajectory or the research field that I would be researching in from uh, 2014 onwards up to now. And that research interest or field is then the field of social innovation. And what particularly was of interest for me is how the concept of social innovation can be used and applied to address societal challenges. That's one of the fundamentals of social innovation. And uh, to devise or to develop innovative solutions to some of the societal challenges that we are experiencing. Um, but particularly looking at the local context and what we are experiencing in South Africa in the local government sphere, where I have worked myself, and is, which was at that stage and currently is still the area in which I lecture and teach, I considered, but how can we apply social innovation to address some of the challenges experienced in the South African local government sector? particularly in the area of service delivery. And from there, it then also set the tone for my, my PhD, which focused on social innovation, and it's used in local government service delivery from a comparative perspective. And my research in terms of publications, um, as well as what I present at local and international conferences, also focuses on social innovation, its application in, in service delivery, but particularly how social innovation then can be applied to facilitate a more constructive role for citizens in the local government service delivery environment. Thank you, Doctor. And Doctor, what are you currently working on? So I'm still focusing on social innovation um, and um, other ways or other areas of how we can be applied in terms of the role of citizens, uh, looking particularly not only at the role of citizens from a co-production perspective and how they can co-plan services or co-design services, co-deliver services with municipalities, but also to co-evaluate services, but also looking at how can municipalities, the officials as well as the councillors facilitate that role through the internal environment or organisational environment that is created and that is um, facilitated or harnessed for such a constructive role of, of citizens. So picking citizen participation in the mandate that municipalities have, and um, also looking at um, if we are talking about co-planning services or co-designing services, how that can actually play out from the perspective of the municipality, how can they include that in the uh, planning processes, the integrated development planning processes, 
how can they foresee that in the organization of culture? How do they have to find lessons? And how are ways in terms of how they can become more open to uh, such a more constructive view of, of, of citizens through the vehicle of social innovation? Uh, linked to that, also other research um, is that also the role of citizen participation in the governance of local government service delivery. And how we can somehow also use the, the vehicle of social innovation and how citizens co partner with, with municipalities or collaborate with municipalities, but through that also exert some form of accountability and responsibility from our elected officials and our officials who are appointed in positions of authority and who are responsible for sustainable service delivery, but also democratic and accountable uh, governance. Um, other areas that I've also ventured into is um, looking at leadership uh, from a VUCA government, local government perspective, given all the challenges that our municipalities also have to face and that they are confronted with um, in this role that they are playing to provide sustainable services to communities and the other challenges such as maybe municipalities who are in some cases not adequately resourced in terms of finances, budgets or human resources, um, adequately resourced in terms of leadership. Um, yeah, those are the, the, the things that I'm also researching. Okay, Doctor, thank you. Coming back to social innovation, as a society, how can we contribute meaningfully to a sustainable cities and communities? So, as I've indicated, uh, social innovation is uh, looks at innovative ways in terms of how we can address societal challenges. And those societal challenges can range, it can be in terms of local government, it can be in terms of service delivery, it can be in terms of areas such as climate change. Uh, we recently had also the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the application of social innovation is, is, there are three schools of thought. Uh, the first school of thought tells us it's goal oriented, so we want to address a particular societal challenge. The truth, innovative solutions, and a solution can be something completely new or new innovation, but it can also be something that is new to a context, but it's been used and applied somewhere else already. The second school of thought tells us that um, social innovation is also uh, process oriented and that's where all the collaborations, the partnerships, the co-production that I referred to earlier um, becomes relevant. Where you have different processes and, and people coming together to find those particular innovative solutions to address a particular societal goal or to reach a particular societal goal or to address a particular societal challenge. And its application can be within the confines, the separate confines of those two schools of thought, but can also be converged. Um, and that's what the third school, school of thought believes that you actually cannot separate the process and the goal oriented nature of social innovation. And that brings me now to the question that you've asked about. Um, contribute, use sustainable cities, etc. And I, I want you to perhaps take you back to the COVID-19 pandemic that we had from 2020 until uh, 2021 and the summer of uh, 2022 as well. When we actually saw pockets of social innovation emerging, and what the pandemic also highlighted to us is that government and stakeholders in society cannot operate and exist and function in a vacuum. Because there are resources that our municipalities, and let's use the example of the municipality because that's what your question asked. Municipalities, perhaps, are not resourced in certain areas. And when we look at the 257 municipalities in South Africa, 
there are quite a number of challenges that they are experiencing. But social innovation can be used to bring that social contact and to identify resources that a municipality is struggling in terms of financial resources or human resources or resources in terms of expertise and skills may not be able or have at their disposal. And that is where you bring together the municipality, you can take the initiative or you can the civil society that approaches the municipality and, and, and say, um, this is what we have to offer to address some of the challenges, particularly that we are experiencing in the South African local government sphere currently. So social innovation has a very unique and an important role to play in the current dispensation and the current challenges that we are experiencing in the South African local government context, given the local environment that um, our municipalities are um, existing in. And there is definitely a place for that, especially in terms of contributing to more sustainable cities, coming up with innovative solutions that can address um, some of the basic service delivery challenges that we are confronted with. We just think about ESCO and our electricity challenges, but also what are other innovations or other solutions to address um, these kind of challenges. And going back to the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw that emerging, we saw pockets of excellence in terms of social innovation, where communities started to take the initiatives, and even individuals started to take the, the, the initiative to find solutions, but through collaborations, through partnerships. And we also saw how our public sector and municipalities um, were actually put in a position where they were obliged to reach out to to other sectors of society through uh, processes or um, where we could see elements of social innovation. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, are there any exciting gaps within your field? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, with social innovation, there's um, a lot of research being done in the global north and um, focusing on the global north and how social innovation is applied um, to uh, address some societal challenges. And there's a, uh, some research and, and a lot of research has been done in terms of that. But looking at the global south and South Africa per se, uh, documenting that uh, in terms of empirical research, there's definitely opportunity there. Um, for capturing those unique cases, um, the circumstances, the environment under which social innovation thrives and uh, what is required for, for social innovation to use, especially in the local government context, if we want to look at that. Um, what type of environment is, is, is needed, um, particularly for it to, to exist and for it to be harnessed. Um, yeah, but also lessons learned. Uh, what are some of the lessons learned from some of the cases or examples that, that we that we see or that we read about? And as I've mentioned, we have seen some of um, the elements of social innovation and how it was applied, especially it was visible during the COVID-19 pandemic. And there are definitely with civil society organizations or with public sector organizations or um, other sectors of society that's applying social innovation that it definitely exists in, in our context um, but getting access to that evidence and where or how it's captured that there's definitely an opportunity there for it to be researched. Thank you so much doctor and then coming back to your work is there any perspective school of thought that influence your writing? Um, yeah, um, so looking at uh, social innovation, um, 
it is embedded in, in social constructivism as well. And um, so those are some of the elements that I incorporate in, in the research that I'm, I'm doing. And also how um, the social context and uh, the application of social innovation in, in, in such a context um, is then evident in, in the research that I'm doing. But also, it drives also then um, the approach that I take when I am doing my research. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Then, looking at citizen participation or engagement, what role is citizen engagement playing in a local government? It plays, citizen participation plays a very important role, and it stems from our constitutional democracy. The Constitution talks about uh, democratic and accountable government. And when we refer to democratic government and government that is, is accountable, um, the basis of a democratic government is a government that's elected by the people but also for the people. And with the, um, the new dispensation and emanating also from our 1998 white paper on local government, the type of local government that was envisioned was one that uh, would prioritize citizen participation. And from the 1998 white paper, there are different um, types of legislation that emerged, such as the Structures Act and the Systems Act, that um, prioritizes that citizen participation. Uh, looking at the Structures Act that outlines you know, board committees, board committee structures as a vehicle for citizen participation. Uh, and to ensure that citizen citizens have a say in decision making. Um, yeah. And then we have the Systems Act that also prioritizes citizen participation in terms of integrated development planning. So you cannot separate it from it, and it's, it's fundamentally integral to integrated development planning and how municipalities undertake it. But also measures of performance management that municipalities undertake. So we cannot separate citizen participation or exclude it from local governments and how municipalities are taking decisions on behalf of citizens. Although what we are noting and, and experiencing over the past few years um, and decade, we have seen citizens expressing their discontent and empathy towards our municipalities um, in through service delivery protests, and that's also a form of citizen participation where citizens are expressing we are not happy, we are not satisfied with the way that either budgets are spent or services are being delivered to us. And uh, we also, research also shows us that um, citizens have become more withdrawn and they, they are beginning to let that trust that they are supposed to have in the elected office bearers, but also in the institution of local government per se. But we cannot separate citizen participation from um, local government municipalities and how they are governed because our constitutional democracy has provided for that. Um, it may sound uh, easier done or easier said than done um, but and, and there's a lot of work and uh, for municipalities in terms of ensuring that they keep citizens engaged, that they provide adequate platforms for citizens to be part of decision-making processes um, and that they also keep in mind that they, when those platforms and opportunities are provided that there is no exclusion that they facilitate through, through those processes. But um, citizen participation is not something that we will be able to get away from. In the local government context. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, 
coming back to citizen participation, one of the attributes of a graduated UFS is citizen engaged. So our students need to go out there and play their role. Yes. And then, Doctor, again, what message can you say to aspiring researchers? Research is, inside, is, is exciting and research should be something that uh, you like to do from the perspective of the topic that you are working on. Uh, we always tell, our, especially our PhD students, that when they start looking at topics to work on, that it, it must be something that you like, um, that excites you, and where you feel there's an area or there's an opportunity for you to make a unique contribution. Um, and that, that contribution can be something very small, as, as well as it's, a, it's something significant, I would say. Um, also, um, find your own voice in your research and, um, and, and how you approach your research. I also find your unique identity and point of life. We all have our own voice that we need to find in the research, in how we portray or present our research and how we write our research. Uh, what was what I have um, what was has been a benefit for me also is to work with other researchers uh, because that is also how you learn new ways of, of, of doing research or undertaking research. You, you learn a lot through that. Uh, you gain other people's perspective also in, in terms of how you can approach whether it's a paper or a book chapter. And there are new and innovative ways that you also learn about in terms of whether it's data collection or how you, you present your, your data as well. Yes, and, and then sometimes you, you get peer reviewed and you get feedback from reviews in terms of research that you submitted and uh, sometimes it's not so positive or it's not the feedback that you have anticipated or expected but you just continue trying uh, because it is a process that's it's an emergent process it's a, it's a process where you also as an individual continuously develop as a, as a researcher yeah, and I think that's important. It's something very important that you must tell yourself. You are working towards. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Meaning collaboration is important. It's very important. Thank you so much. Apart from research, what are your other interests? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to see, um, or let me rather tell you about the project that I'm involved in that um, uh, looks at the community of Lipton and uh, how we can support um, communities or uh, individuals or civil society organizations um, that's not uh, doing so well and that is through um, contributions of a nutritious meal. Yeah, so that, that is something that's dear to my heart and where I, I try to make a, a difference, a very small difference. Um, yeah, so how can I also contribute to the, um, the social upliftment of, of other people? That's profound. Uh, doctor, something that we sometimes neglect the mental health so what's your take on that how can we maintain our mental health or look after our mental health yeah that's that's quite a uh, a, i would say serious topic and there are uh, colleagues and sometimes even students who suffer from mental health uh, challenges and, and issues. It's important, you know, in, in the 
work of the movie I would say but also a work in a way that we keep a very, a very healthy work life balance I would say and uh, try to strike a good balance um, especially when things become difficult but uh, we, we need to be conscious that there are colleagues uh, students or acquaintances who might be confronted with mental health challenges and deal with it with the required sensitivity um, whether it's uh, institutional pers- uh, support from an institutional perspective but also um, how we can in our in our areas in our departments um, assist them and provide them the required support for those types of individuals thank you so much doctor for sharing with us we really appreciate your time and we have noticed that you uh, not only a lecturer but also you're contributing to the community thank you so much thank you, thank you so much thank you.